And so you, you're one of your, I was looking through Google Scholar and one of your most highly cited first author papers um, was a systematic review in 2014. So I think it's had about 890 citations and that was published in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry. Um, and you basically reviewed all the physical activity interventions for people living with a mental illness from earliest ever recorded to 2013. Um, you know, you looked at all those major databases like Medline, Embase, um, Psych Info. You didn't look at eating disorders or um, dysnea, which is like chronic depression, I think. Um, and you looked at all the, all of them were randomized controlled trials, um, but they weren't just exercise interventions. They included also, you know, counseling and, um, you know, like lifestyle programs as well, not just based around specifically exercise. Um, can you tell us, tell the listeners a little bit about what your, I guess, main findings were that came out of that systematic review and what it, major takeaways are? You're making me sweat here, Hayden. So just, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed with the background, but that was, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. That was done in 2013, published in 2014. Um, so that was, no, no, you, you were, you were correct. Um, I'm just, I'm just laughing. I haven't, I haven't spoken about this for a while. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my uh, review I did as part of my PhD. Um, and it was a really, you know, interesting process for me because I able was able to just completely emerge myself in all the the literature to date and and a, a meta-analysis is obviously for those that aren't um, big job interested in the boring science stuff yeah we we take the raw data from studies and combine it statistically um and there's obviously been far more since we published that so that's you know now you know there's been it's 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 outdated now um but essentially what we what we did and what was different at the time is that we didn't look at um so, so what we did that, that was different was that we looked at the antidepressive effect of exercise, but across all mental disorders. Right. So you're, you're spot on. We excluded eating disorders, but we included things like schizophrenia because we knew that exercise can improve depressive symptoms in people with schizophrenia. Um, and we included anxiety. We included uh, uh, major depression. Um, can I, can and I what ask? we found... Sorry. Yeah, sure. But can I ask why you excluded eating disorder? Was it because the fact that it was based more around they were centered more around the food they were eating would would likely not be influenced by the exercise or exercise would have more of an inhib inhibitory effect on the actual condition? Yeah, so uh, I guess if we think about just coming back to what I mentioned about working in the hospital and I was working in the hospital at that time. Yeah. Um, and that idea that I mentioned before about not wanting to read the diagnosis of, uh, of patients and seeing firsthand that actually whether they, you know, no matter what that diagnosis was, and again, I'll come back to the eating disorder thing, yeah. um, but that, that exercise could be effective. And so the approach to the meta-analysis reflected what I was seeing in, in the hospital at that time. Yeah. And it was the idea that it didn't matter about the diagnosis what I was seeing was that this looked like there was an effect and that this was positive. The, the reason we excluded eating disorders was because there, there's a, an added layer of complexity there um, in the presentation and in the relationship between um, potentially compulsive exercising um, and, and also the, 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 the nature of eating disorders as, as an illness and the relationship with, with food, with nutrition, with lifestyle factors that makes it um, just a different factor. And there are people that are, that are specialising in that area. There is evidence around that. So um, Alana Riley, I think it is, is an exercise physiologist doing great work around eating disorders. Um, Michelle Props, who's the former, the, the founding president of the International Organisation of Physical Therapists in Mental Health, he did amazing work around eating disorders and, and, and exercise in Belgium. So there's people doing that work. We felt that because of the complexity of that illness and the different relationship with, with, with exercise, it was fair to exclude that from that review. It makes sense. Yeah. Cause if someone's got anorexia, they would be exercising to eat into their calorie deficit 
to lose more weight, I guess. So exercise for someone with depression, anxiety, which could be used as a tool to improve their health for someone with that anorexia would almost be like a hindrance or something that used to worsen their, their condition. Yeah. And, and if we think about the approach as an exercise practitioner, if you've got someone with that, say, depression or schizophrenia or anxiety disorder or PTSD, then overwhelmingly what you're dealing with is, is symptoms that relate to poor motivation, that relate to, to fatigue. So the, the, the approach is going to be around motivation to exercise and trying to create those, you know, that'll, that motivation and support people. Um, that's going to be a very different approach compared to working with an eating disorder. 